Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mac, play fast football. All right, make sure you check out some of our sponsors, GameStrat, sideline replay system we use. If you're looking for a highly reliable, highly affordable sideline replay system, make sure you look in the description box. There's a link that takes you directly to GameStrat's website. Excellent customer service. Great guys. Check them out. Just Play Football, the only uh, play diagramming tool that I use. All right, it's digital software helping your program get to the next level. For me, it's the only play drawing uh, tool or, or the only play diagramming tool that I use, so make sure you check out Just Play. Defensive Coordinator 1, it's an in-game app allowing you to make critical adjustments based on actual live in-game data. So you go in with a template and tendencies, start to chart your calls, their calls, logged into a system, spits it right out to you for you to know what's been good, what hasn't been good. You can make valuable critical adjustments taking the guesswork out of it based off the actual live data that's happening. Difference USA, all right, uh, the ultimate striking machine, we have one in our weight room. You can get thousands of reps working on elbows in, thumbs up, mechanics of striking, the physicality of striking, becoming more violent in your striking, and it's got different uh, spring tension, so as the kids get older, stronger, you can change the tensions to make it a little bit harder to leverage the sled in, so make sure you check out uh, Difference USA, ours attaches right to our squat rack in our weight room, so we don't need to worry about weather, we don't need a partner to hold a med ball or a bag, just a kid in the weight room, have at it, all right, thousands of, of reps working on the ultimate striking machine. Okay, Max One, which is an app that kind of lets head coaches um, streamline organization, communication, workouts, everything into one platform, right on your phone or your computer or your desktop. You can, uh, you can get your schedule down, your commu you can communicate, send messages out to people if there's changes in anything. You can get workouts on there that the kids can follow. So if you're, as a head coach, with all the things that you have going on, if you want to streamline everything into one, all right, into one place, make sure you check out, all right, Max One, the app. All right, and, and give those guys a look because it'll make your life easier as a head coach. And then Dome Headwear, which is the uh, major sponsor of PlayFast Football. This is our white PlayFast Football hat here with our PlayFast logo on the back. Dome logo in orange. You can change the stitch color. You can change the panel colors. You can change uh, the top button, the eyelets on the top. You can build a hat, custom online hat builder. Uh, build a hat however you want with your logo. As long as you have your file that you can put on there. You can generate, build your own hat. All right, every coach has a story. Every hat has a story. Dome wants to help you tell yours. Also, all right, if you're on Twitter, check out Dome on Twitter. They posted some things recently with some play fast boonies. I know them as bucket hats, but uh, they have a gray one. They have a, a fluorescent yellow one, and then they have a blue one with our play fast logo. Check them out if you're on Twitter. Check out at Dome Hats. And then they have their Dome store, www.dome. H E A D W E A R dot C O. That's Dome Headwear dot C O. All right, take a look at their store. They've got some play fast hats up there. So I'm going to do a video for you guys today on my thoughts on developing players and how that's probably or maybe maybe different um, than some other people. Um, but I'm going to talk to you about what I think with 22 years of experience now. What I think I'm looking for when I am figuring out what players I think I can develop, which players I think are going to develop to be really good, and then in general if there's somebody that may have never played football before, can they be developed? All right, so the reason I'm doing the video is we're currently in weightlifting season right now, and as a head football coach, I'm also the head weightlifting coach, and a couple of my best weightlifters are kids that were in my weight training class that did not play other sports and they did not play football. And they got, last year as freshmen, they got into my weight training class and I watched their work ethic and I watched how they lifted and then I watched, okay, they, they've got some fast twitch fibers to them and some things to them, but it was their relentless attack every day of how they did things and they're not football players of mine. So they're in classes with football players of mine and they outworked some of those football players of mine every single day and they weren't playing a sport for me yet. So they, I was just their you know, weight training teacher at the time. They, they had no other allegiance to me. And they're out working kids that actually play football for me every day after school. So you know, I asked those kids if they'd like to be on the weight training team when January came last year. And lo and behold, a year later as 10th graders, they're some of the best lifters that are on my team. And the one kid is lifting at 154 and the other kid is lifting at 169. And last year, the one kid lifted at 39 or 29 for a little bit, and the other kid lifted at 54. And they're five foot, 
eight or nine around. So obviously, as excuse me, as weightlifters, they have good builds on. But what I'm saying is, as a football coach, these kids didn't just attract my eye right away because I saw nothing but size and potential. And I think football coaches sometimes, when you talk about recruiting the halls or you talk about kids in your school, the main thing I hear from people all the time is, hey, you got to see this big kid I got over here, or you got to see this big kid I got, or you got to see, I got this kid in class, he's six foot, 200 pounds, I got this kid. My first comment all the time is, have they ever played football before? All right, well, I'll find out. It doesn't matter how big you are, if you've never played football before, the only excuse I would give someone possibly is a ninth grade kid that might have been overweight, Pop Warner, his whole life, um, never got a chance to play football because they were overweight and couldn't play in junior high for whatever reason, that may happen. But if you have a kid that is six foot, six foot one, 200 to 220 pounds, and he had the chance to play football all the way up till ninth grade, the first thing you want to find out was, did your parents not let you play football? Okay, was there something that your mom or dad didn't want you to do when it comes down to playing football? If that was the case, all right, then it's acceptable. If it's a case that the kids never thought of playing football before, right away that raises a red flag to me because why have you never thought of playing football before if you're that big or you got size or athletic ability? Oh, I was a basketball player and thought I would just be a basketball player. All right, there are some different things that will come up. But in my experience, okay, in 20-some-odd years of coaching football now, in my experience, nine times out of ten, those kids will never pan out to be football players because football is a little different breed of cat than other sports. You're going to spend 80% of your year lifting weights and never playing the sport that you're getting ready to play, and you're only going to play that sport about 30% of the year. So I guess the numbers, if you play 10 or 11 games in a year, 11 out of 52, yeah, it's somewhere, it's somewhere in that ballpark, maybe 20 to 25%. Let's say, for argument's sake, let's say 75% of your year is going to be spent training to play the sport that you play 25% of the year. Now, where that's different is when you have other sports that have AAU and year-round things like basketball, baseball, softball, all right, sometimes even uh, track or lacrosse or you know golf or any other sport, you can ask a kid that, that you think may help the team size-wise or whatever, a basketball player, for instance. You get a big, tall kid and you think he can help the team, you can bring him in and have him start playing basketball right away. In your offseason, you probably have AAU or you have some type of group that you're playing with that's legal for you to allow that kid to play basketball. He gets in and starts dribbling, shooting, dunking right away. If we find a football player that we think might help us in football, he's got to go in my weight room right next door here for four or five months before he ever touches a football. So now he's got to have some different makeup to him to make it to the actual playing of the game of football. So what we do is so different that I don't think you can necessarily just go through and look at, yeah, him and him. Every one of us can do it. We all know what they look like. We all know what good young athletes look like. We all know the size. We all know the, 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 you know, the body composition. We all know what that looks like, okay? But I'm just going to go through my list of the way I look at it now over my 22 years of, of how I've been doing things, okay, and, and the way I chase players down, in my opinion, all right, then now that I'm 47 years old, okay? I look at work ethic number one. If anybody tells me they got, I got a kid in my class, got a kid, tell me how he is in, his, in your class, tell me how he is with assignments. I want to know if he's lazy, he's late, whatever, he's not going to pan out. If he hasn't played football for me, I don't think I can develop a kid that doesn't have that kind of work ethic. So I'm looking at work ethic right away. Those two lifters I talked about, I had no idea who they were. They were freshmen in my weight training class. I'm concentrating on my football players making sure they're doing their lifts. And these kids are jumping in with my football players and outworking my football players and drawing my attention to them. Right away, that's somebody that I say, hey, I can work with that. I can work with that. All right? I can take that because of the work ethic and because of all right, what, how they respond under these circumstances. I can take that and work with that. Even though at the time, one kid was 5'6", 128, and the other kid was... 5'8", 152, or whatever he was, I knew right away from a weightlifting round I could work with those kids, okay? One of them ended up eventually playing football for me this past season, so we got to a point where it 
progress beyond weightlifting, but I knew right away that I could work with those kids, and I know what you're going to say, Coach, weightlifting and football are different. Yes, I agree 100%, but the thing that's not different is the work I think it takes in the weight room to get to where we need to be on the football field. That's not different for weightlifters or football players. I know size and, and things are different, but the work ethic is not. So when I look at that, number one, all right, if a kid's got that, I'll take a look at him. I don't even need to see anything else. If he's got a work ethic, all right, that's a player that I feel like, through my experience, in 27, uh, 22 years of coaching and however many years of playing football, my knowledge of the game, my knowledge of, of training kids, all right, which is not, I'm not a professional in the weight room, I'm not a professional speed trainer. All right, but I played college football and college golf at the same time. I've coached high school football for 22 years. I have a pretty good idea what it takes to put kids in position to be successful. I would never claim to be a professional in those fields at all. There's people way better than me in those fields out there. But I have an idea of what it takes. So the first thing I'm looking at right away is work ethic. Second thing, accountability. When it comes down to being a football player and finding a football player, you better find kids that you can count on. So when we do our off-season stuff, when the football season ends in November, and I have young coaches that are chomping at the bit in December to get kids in the weight room. And I'm trying to tell them, hey, guys, trust me, you're going to want to take some time off. You're going to want to take some downtime and spend time with your girlfriend or do other things because when football rolls around again in the spring, it's back to the grind. Or, nah, coach, we want to get out of it. We want to work. Right? Okay, fine. They, they open up the weight room in December, and they got kids coming in voluntary in December. And then they start talking about the kids that aren't there. Like, Man, coach, what about him? And what about him? And my thing all the time is, hey, when you do workouts in December that are voluntary, here's what you're looking for. Figure out who's there because that's who you're probably going to be able to count on when the season comes. So instead of worrying about the ones that aren't there and going, Coach, I really wish Joe and Bob and Tim were here. You know, he's 6'2", and he's 6'3", and he's going to be our mic, and he's going to be our DN, and he's going to be our center, and he's going to be... Careful now when you say he's going to be because if he ain't got the wherewithal to be around right now in December, you may want to look at Jim and not Joe. Because Jim is here when you have voluntary workouts and Joe isn't. Yeah, but Joe looks a lot better. Okay, trust me, when you're doing these things in December, start looking at who's there, who works, who comes, who shows up, who works hard, who listens. That's how you develop players. You need those type of players. So accountability, okay, attitude. How do they respond when you coach them? How do they respond to adversity? If they're in the weight room missing lifts, how do they respond when they miss lifts? Do they go punch the wall and break a hand and be out for six weeks? Or do they come back and give effort again and again and again? Can they understand a program to be on as a football player to say, hey, we're in January offseason, these are the lifts we're doing, these are the percentages? Or are they going to be guys that just go over there and put as much weight on the bar as they think or more weight than the guy next to them and try and struggle around and lift it because it's a macho ego thing? Attitude, attitude, attitude. The ones that screw you in here are going to screw you out on the field. All right, the ones that screw you in the classroom are going to screw you on the field. They, they don't change, all right, personalities. They don't change stripes or spots if they're tigers or, or leopards. They don't change. They are those kids, all right? So attitude. How do they respond under duress in there? When you challenge them in the weight room, how do they respond? Because that's what's going to happen to you on the football field, 100%. I believe that with all my heart. If you challenge them in the weight room and they have a bad attitude, they're going to have a bad attitude everywhere else they go. So I look at attitude, all right? Want versus need. How much does somebody want to do something, and how much do they absolutely need to? All right, I explain to kids all the time. I played Division three football, never got a dime in my life to play football. All right, I ended up playing uh, golf on a scholarship when I first started in college, and then golf and football, and my money came from golf, not football, so I never earned a dime of money playing the game of football. I played until I got cut by an arena team, until I had an opportunity to go overseas and play in Finland that fell through. I played until they told me I couldn't play anymore. I played until they said I was not good enough, big enough, fast enough, strong enough, and had to be either cut, released, or just told no because I needed to play. I needed the game of football. I didn't want to play football. I needed to play football. So I did it until they told me I could not do it anymore. All right, And that's what I tell kids all the time. When we have kids that are looking to play college football. Do you need to play football or do you want to play football? Do you need to be recruited or do you want to be recruited? Nowadays with social media, a lot of kids just want to be recruited so you can post it on a story somewhere for somebody to see. You really don't, you don't want to go through or need to go through all the things that you have to do to play college football there, but it feels good to tell people on your story, hey, got an offer. All right? The worst one is when you see kids at Division III schools posting that they got offers. I played Division III. I coached it for two years. There is no offer to Division III football. 
There's no legal binding letter of intent to Division III football. You are not accepting athletic money. You can do a signing day. You can sign something to the school. There's nothing legally binding. So the only offer you're getting is that you're getting an offer to continue an opportunity to play college football. They're not offering you a scholarship. They're not offering you anything. Even if you're going for zero dollars on academic money and financial aid, there is no offer made by that program. And that's a big pet peeve of mine. I tell my kids, if it's Division Three, or do not put on social media, bless to receive an offer. Because I played it and I coached it. There is no offer. They're extending, all right, because you're a good football player, they are recruiting you, but they're extending, all right, an opportunity to continue your education and athletic career at that institution. You are not legally bound to anything. An offer is they make a scholarship offer that when you sign, you are legally bound for a year to that NLI and you can't get out of it until time lapses or, you know, whatever. It's a legally binding document. All right? So when I talk to those kids, do you really need to play football or you just, do you just want to be recruited? Okay? So work ethic, accountability, attitude, want to versus need to. Okay? Then I'll look at size, speed, twitch, athletic ability. Okay? Never ever do I look at it the other way around and go, wow, look at that kid. He needs to play football. 22 years, it almost never, ever, ever pans out that way. All right? I go the other way and I work here down. Then I get to this and say, okay, is there something there? Okay? So like those weightlifters I talked about. I didn't have to worry about how tall, big they were because they weren't playing football. But as soon as I saw them start to progress through how we taught the clean exercise or squat or front squat or bench or deadlift, as soon as I start to see the technique and then I could see that they've got the ability to bend and then all of a sudden on a pull, they've got the ability to have some twitch, all right? I didn't look at any of that until these things popped out in my class. Once all these popped out, then I looked at these and said, hey, you know what? You guys would be pretty good. Would you like to be on a weightlifting team? It's the same thing in football, all right? When kids walk in the door that are 6'5", and 280 pounds, most football guys, all right, and, and even myself, you're going to look and go, man, he'd probably be a good tackle. He'd look good. you got to investigate it more, for me at least. I will look and say, oh, he looked. That's a good looking kid. But I never look and go, he should be playing tackle or he should be playing linebacker or who's that kid, coach? Where did he come from? I don't know. And I don't want to know until I know all these things first. Then that one is last. Okay, so, again, that's just for me and, and my experience all right, when it comes to developing players, that's just how I approach it, all right? That's just kind of a, a, a general guideline of what I'm going to look at before I physically really, you know, want to de devote more time into somebody, all right? Are they going to work? Can I count on them? Can I push them? Do they really need to do this, all right? Then let's look at what they are physically, athletically, all right? And the reason I say that to you is I've done this for 22 years, Everybody's got a different mode. There's coaches out there that are going to be pounding the hallways trying to find football players, recruiting their own school. I think it's great. Then there's other coaches out there that are going to be pounding the streets and everywhere else to find players, such as life. It's, it's getting more and more legal nowadays. It is what it is. For me, all right, I'm not going to be pounding anything. I'm going to go find the kids that I want that work for me, the kids that come to me that say they want to play football. Any kid that comes to me that says they want to play football, by all means, come on in. All right, because you wanting to play and finding me is a lot better than me going out and finding you. Because for every blind side or for every, you know, one there is out there, diamond in the rough, there's 300 others that never make it. All right, so I like the kids that come to me and say, Coach, I'm interested in football. I want to play football. Come find me. Okay, come find a coach. Go find a head coach somewhere else. Then let's see if we can develop it. All right, I'm, and again, like every other video I do, guys, this isn't right, this isn't wrong, this isn't you have to do it this way, don't, this is how I do it, this is how I approach it, all right, 22 years of experience, all in high school, two years as a GA in small college football, I use this every day of the week, all right, because it works out better for me, and at this point in my life, I'm looking for more hits and not misses, I don't want to swing and miss on a kid that looks great, but has nothing else for me to work with, I want to make sure I, I get some more hits, so I need to find those other things first to go ahead and make sure I hit that fastball down the middle rather than take a chance on that on that breaking ball or some other pitch. All right, guys, I appreciate everything you do. Make sure you click the subscribe button, notifications, turn that bell on, ring that bell every time so you know when I put a video out, thumbs up, thumbs down, whether you like the video or not. Comment on the videos to let us know so we know what videos to do in the future. Thank you for everything you do for Play Fast Football. Thank you for everything you've done for me. All right, remember, you won't play well until you play fast.
See you next time.